Hello, I'm Amy Zaley with the Jerusalem Connection Re Red Alert Report for Wednesday, April 4th. Not so sunny news from the Toronto Sun. Sue Ann Levy of the Toronto Sun reported this past Monday that a University of Toronto professor acted in a very discriminatory and biased, even anti-Semitic way to a Jewish student on campus. To me, this exposes an underlying intolerance that many progressives on the left hold while they claim to be champions of human rights and equality, let alone educators. They hold an obvious and unabashed disdain for Jewishness or Israelis. 24-year-old University of Toronto graduate student who happens to be Jewish, Ari Blaff, in December emailed several professors in the Middle Eastern Studies Department for asking for time to discuss possible topics for a pursuit of a PhD. All of these professors responded flavor favorably except for one, Jens Hassan. Now, Professor Hassan didn't simply decline the request for time, but rather emailed Ari back what was a rather shocking response, accusing Ari of being an Israeli government operative. Hassan's email response to Balaf contained that he, as a Hezbollah fellow, is an Israeli advocacy activist working on behalf of the Ministry of Israel on a new offensive to boycott against the boycott, divest, and sanction movement on campus. Now, BDS is a worldwide movement which is found on many university campuses and in various communities asking people, students, professors, to not engage in educational opportunities with Israel, consumer groups to uh, uh, issue boycotts against Israeli products, singers and songwriters and artists to boycott the nation and its venues and museums for their work, and even writers to refuse to publish in the area. Now, Robert Walker, the Canadian director of the Hasbara Fellowship, is, admits that this is a pro-Israel campus advocacy group, but notes that the real danger is that the BDS movement is attempting to de demonize Israel and anyone even connected with Israel while having no interest in actually protecting the Palestinians they claim to be serving. Walker continues to say our mandate is to empower pro-Israel students so that they may tell the truth about Israel on campus and combat the senseless misinformation peddled by the BDS movement. Now this of course is the crux of the matter. While pro-Israeli, they are simply interested in sharing documentable truths. Now this university of professor who has a long history with being active in the BDS movements and including claiming that Israel is an apartheid state and has been involved in events both on and off campus to uh, convey his ideology. He has contended that the Hasbara, Hasbara handbook um, has directed Ari and other fellows to approach people on campus and convince them that any legitimate nonviolence criticism of Israel is indeed discrimination of Jews everywhere. Now this is a point I've actually been making over the last year or so, that the BDS movement has actually gone beyond any legitimate criticism of Israel and has fallen into blatant anti-Semitism because it will not separate Israeli policy from simply being Jewish by identity. Hazan's email, of course, ended with his refusal to meet with Ari on, quote, educational and ethical grounds. Now, Ari, the student, responded that he was shocked, and he was also concerned about the Jewish students, pro-Israel or just simply Jewish, that are in this professor's classes, speaking or writing essays, and he was afraid they wouldn't get fair treatment. And so he has a much broader concern than just a professor not giving his time to have a meeting to discuss ideas. After being encouraged by his friends and colleagues, Ari did submit a formal complaint to the university administration. Now the author, Sue Ann Levy, has attempted to contact Jens Hassan for comment regarding this, but she has not gotten a response to her numerous queries. However, a vice president of the Human Resources and Equity Department at the University of Toronto did email a response, and she said that she believes that it's important that all members of the U of T community feel safe. Her in her response, we quote, we expect all members of our community to comply with U of T's policies and guidelines, creating and teaching a learning environment that is free from dis discrimination and harassment on any of prohibitive grounds. 
She added that any such complaints, including RAs, are given careful consideration. However, she would not uh, um, give a particular comment regarding RAs complaint noting privacy reasons. Michael Mostyn, an area Benai birth president, has called this whole thing morally repugnant and believes that it is absolutely intolerable for a professor to boycott any student over his pro-Israel views or because he is falsely assumed to be an Israeli student, uh, citizen. Excuse me. He claims that the administration must respond swiftly and decisively, decisively that this blatant discrimination from faculty members may not be tolerated at all. This is another proof, he claims, of the corrosive and anti-Semitic impact that the BDS movement is having on college campuses. They are regressed from boycotting the Jewish state to boycotting Jewish institutions and now boycotting Jewish students individually. The mandate from the Hezbollah Fellowship is to empower pro-Israel students that they may tell the truth about Israel on campus and combat the senseless mis misinformation peddled by BDS activists. That is the claim that um, Jens Hassan says is a playbook for uh, approaching students and faculty on campus to delegitimize the BDS movement, to simply discuss the truth. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up this entire event to your attention is that it is unacceptable at any Western university for a teacher or professor to discriminate against any student regarding their identity or belief system or hold any kind of educational grudge against them. Any teacher or professor can have their own opinion, their own viewpoint, and their own response to different things happening around the world and people involved in them. However, while they are on the campus, they cannot allow that bias or that opinion to bleed into their everyday work at and jobs. For this professor, if he truly in his heart didn't want to talk to the students, he could have just simply declined the invitation, noting a number of logistical reasons, rather than lash out against his identity. No other identity or characteristic or belief system held by any student would ever be tolerated to be treated in this way. If a Korean student or a Chinese student or a Buddhist student um, or any student holding a belief system or an identity that a professor disagreed with was then met with being cut off from educational access, a local newspaper and every human rights organization in the area would rightfully be calling to attention to this matter and calling for some remedy. We cannot allow the Jewish population to be the only population, race, or identity in the world to be discriminated against. It is not right as a civilized people, whether you're Christian or any other uh, religion or no religion at all, to allow Jewishness or Israeliness to be deemed a flaw by anybody and that, the pub that anyone can publicly um, and without fear discriminate against. It's simply incongruent to all the value systems of Western civilization and all the human rights activist groups that are in the community today. It is simply illogical compared to our moral framework. I brought this to your attention so you can continue to pray regarding the individual students on various campuses around the Western Hemisphere and um, understand that they go through some private battles that are not on the floor of the UN or at the borders of Israel. Shavua Tov. Have a great week.